All right, welcome back, my Planet Coaster friends, to another episode of Scenario Spotlight. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at Draugr's Revenge, created by Forana. And it says here, you've received a distress call with instructions to build a portal and investigate the disappearance of miners from a colony on another planet. Build more mines while keeping the colonists happy. All right, we've got a Sim City going on here. <laughs> All right. Um, the backstory here is you have received a distress call to build a portal and investigate the disappearance of miners in a colony on another planet. They are the descendants of the famous raiding and trading men from the north, always looking for new worlds to explore. In their search for new land, they stumbled upon a freezing planet covered with snow, ice, and red earth, a sign of fertile soil rich with metals and minerals. They decided to stay here for a while, building up a mining colony. After all, they could use some restocking and getting more fuel. But what, the, what they did not foresee is that they would never leave again. One after another, workers started to disappear in the mines. Nobody uh -huh. knew what happened to them, so after a while, they started building mining machines in the open air. What else is left to do when nobody wants to go down to the mines anymore? Rumors are that there is something evil down in the mines that guards something, but no one has lived to confirm if that is true. Years and years have passed until there is almost no one left the colony. At that point, you receive a distress call. You need to investigate what happened to the miners. What's down there in the mines? Did they make a big mistake by choosing this fertile planet to build their colony? Everything is about money, so you need to make sure to bring new people with you and keep everyone happy. Build more mining machines, shops, and overall entertainment. And if you dare, build another mine track. The freezing climate and the rough terrain are a challenge for you that you need to overcome. Good luck. All right, absolutely amazing. Okay. Um, I, I just want to explain this to the uh, viewers for a second here. Lauren's reading this, so she can't see the screen at the same time. So, I, I, we, we, you know, ho hopefully you guys don't mind me being extra thorough and looking at things a little bit twice uh, so Lauren can see yet again what she's missed. Um, uh, just just the nature of how we're doing things. Uh, I definitely want to be looking at things while she's reading so that you have that something to look at. ship portal things are really yeah, cool. Yeah, I really love that. The ships are amazing as well. And the park entrance where, where the guests are spawning, they're coming out of a oh, ship. They're being dropped off. Nice. And I really love that. That's amazing. And you know what I really, really love? I love the contrast between the red rock and the snow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And cool I kind of like the creativity of the story. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The rise Definitely. Sure. Too. And I... I I have the feel of, of drilling like a, one of the flat rides over there. It was really looked like a drill. Oh yeah, yeah. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you want to check out the scenario goal? Yep. Maybe? Sorry, we're, we're we're learning the format <laughs> as we go, everybody. So this is episode three so far, and I'm gonna start looking up the objectives right away. So here we go. Easy already got one checked off. Um, raise guest hmm. happiness to 95 percent. Uh, reach a monthly profit of 3,000. Build five rides. Three more rides because two are already included. Medium build a coaster with six excitement, three fear, three nausea. Pretty easy to accomplish. Uh, build, what would that be? Five more rides. Mm -hmm. And then hard, make a firework display that holds 200 guests attraction for 120 seconds. Build a another coaster. Well, here's the, the downside of this. If you just did this objective, it also beats this one. All right? Mm -hmm. If you what were to do, do a seven excitement coaster right off the bat that has a big drop of 50 meters, five inversions, uh, at least three sections of airtime, it would complete this one. Oh, yeah, right? but I mean, that's, that's, a two for that's one. possible in any other scenarios, too. But assuming you go for this first and then go, oh, crap, I need another bigger, badder coaster now. Uh, right. You can do it either way. It's if you're being efficient. It's usually well, yeah, but yeah, uh, usually it's because it's medium because it's like I have the money to build the smaller coaster right. now to beat that one, yeah. and then later you have the money to do the extreme one. Good, good point. It's the same one with that coaster king one in the original Planet Coaster. There's like you're supposed to build like 20 things, but I think somebody optimized it like you could build like two coasters and it completes everything in the mission. <laughs> yeah, right. Sustain a monthly profit of six thousand for six month months and what are we doing right now we're losing money and pay off all loans so let's take a quick look at the loans only a two thousand dollar loan it's a pretty easy one well if you're losing money you're probably going to take out another loan that's right if you <laughs> add loans yeah, yeah. you have yeah. to pay back yeah. those loans as well so that's right so there's a, there's a bit of a challenge to this to get to win the hard part mm-hmm mm -hmm. 
uh, I, I would have liked to see something included with that prestige like we saw at that first one. Um, getting getting just a little bit of theming on some of those rides that you have to build. I definitely love that added uh, challenge with the prestige that you could do. Uh, that, so here's the first flat ride, and it does look like a drill. It's a great really? use of the forge. It is yeah, really it, cool. It, it ties in with the story really well. And the buildings are fantastic. So here's one of the shops. Is a um, This is the staff management and the bathrooms we got a first aid over here what do we have over oh this is the queue for the ride cool and then oh, it's becoming nighttime let's lock that down here's the other ride skin that's that's also very cool yeah, looks really good mm-hmm interesting uh, font that he's used everywhere as well. It's consistent. I think we have some more shops down here. Or, yeah, Tiki Cheeky. Yeah. Golpy. Oh, that's cool. Well themed. And then we have um, shop placeholders. So if you want to just throw a shop in there, um, blank, sh blank skins. Oh, that's cool. I like these buildings a lot. Yeah, the, the shops are amazing. Really good job on those. Very neat builds. And the train works pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's going to be challenging to uh, to fit your rides in. So from the looks of things, he's added some pre-pathing, but I don't think it's linked up. Um, or the guests yeah. are just not coming up here. Okay, so this does pe uh, take you all the way up. And then you have little bits so you can make a couple shops or a ride on the, the cliff here. And then you can build all along these strips. You can build up top. I love the layering aspect to this. As you build, you just see your park expanding upward. That is very fun to me. You can build some bridges across here and build some stuff over there. More nice little flat plateau areas up top. Brings you all the way around, connects back in. I really like that. It's cool. Very unique. And you can build all around the back sides as well. And, and I'm happy to see that. I'm happy to see that. The pathing has already been done for some of the areas that would have been a challenge for people. Yeah, definitely agree. Alright, what is our main attraction? We got a coaster. The Mine Train of Death, and it goes into the mountain. Mm -hmm. Alright, so American Arrow Corkscrew Coaster. Here's You're right the off the stats. bat, that first loop is beautiful. Yeah, I really love how it hugs the terrain. Mm -hmm. I get to take a look at it here. Oh, nice stall there too. That looks great. Okay, we're gonna close it down and ride it and test so we get going. I got the volume down a little bit now, so you guys can hear. So the sound effects aren't as great as they normally Good. are. Oh, Great scenery to start off. Turn it up just yeah. a little bit more. Alright, sorry, I should be looking out here. Ooh. Alright. Ooh, some blue lights in there. So some of the adventure DLC used on that. This is nice neat. theming. Great yeah, theming. Great lighting. Trigger. Oh wow. Oh. Impressive work. That's a really cool looking cavern. Yeah, got the adventure DLC animatronics doing some mining up there. Oh, ghosts in here. Really nice detail work. Wow. Oh, look at all. Oh, I thought that was gold at first. It's oh, lava. That's the new lava, right? Mm hmm. I would have liked to see a big gold uh, area. I like the lava. I know, I do. Yeah. I do. Oh. For sure. Turn backs, breaking boards. Love that. Oh, now we're in trouble after the boards? Uh oh. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh, 
little herky jerky through that part. I wow, so. did you see that big knight? Yes, I did. I like the views. This is a great coaster. I'm telling you, the scenery on this one's amazing. Uh, the the terrain work that they've done. I like that he kept it so dark. Yeah, some of those scenes are just brilliant. One like. Oh, we've seen a lot of mineshaft coasters in the past, but that was a very unique one. I think it was very original. It didn't feel like anything I've seen before. Whoa! Oh, that was nice. Correct. <laughs> like I say, I, I, I'm really impressed with the uh, the design work uh, that they did on the on the terrain inside. Me too. Really well done. That was phenomenal. Uh, for me, there was one part of the coaster as we're dropping down there. It was just a little bit too whiplashy. I wish he smoothed that out because other than that, it would have been a flawless experience in my opinion. Um, Agreed. But, I know the point you were talking about. Yeah, though. just whip, whip, up, up, uh, up. Uh, yeah, I would have lost my head a little. Uh, wow, this is great. Really love the uh, terrain work as well. So... Is there anything else we need to look at? I do want to check out the Steam page real quick. So, guys, the links will be down in the description below. If you want to download this scenario and give it a play for yourself, he did add a starter kit, um, but he did not link his collection. Lauren, is there a, a collection linked in the form? There is. Uh, he's got a very nice custom page for it too. That's mm -hmm. cool. So yeah, there's a bunch of stuff in here if you guys need if you start playing this scenario He has provided a whole bunch of assets from the workshop almost like Viking and a mix between Viking and um, Western I think that plays well with his uh, airships and things like that kind of like a steampunk Western um yeah, a mix of Viking things to uh, get this park going. So if you want to play this, download that starter kit, and you'll have more than enough to start expanding right away and match his art style. So very good job there. All right, anything you guys want to add before we cut it off? I, I think it's it's a it's a it's a good scenario. It's I, beautiful. I think this one would be very challenging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the terrain work and it's just starting at the bottom here, working your way up. It, it, it's got me very inspired to play it. So great stuff. So there you go, everybody. That's going to do it for this episode of Scenario Spotlight Contest Entry, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye now. See ya. Bye, Web. <laughs>